Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. During this video I'll be showing you how you can make your own flags in Unity and the final result is going to be looking something like this. So let's get started by first of all turning off this game and deactivating this uh, flag and I'll be creating another one. So let's go on by creating a plane. I'm going to be using a, fl a plane to represent the actual flag and I'll be rotating it on the minus 90 if pointing towards me. I will also add a cylinder to it and this will represent kind of the thing that is holding the flag. You can place it vertically, horizontally, uh, to whatever area you want around the flag. It depends on what you're trying to do with the flag and what kind of flag are you making. I'm going to be making kind of like a horizontal flag or a vertical, I don't know what kind of flag it is. I don't know much about flags, that not that I think of it. Anyway, this is the flag that I'm going to be making and it's going to be looking like this. But now our plane is obviously a pretty basic plane as of now and we need to turn it into a flag. How do we do that? By using a component called cloth. So the cloth turns this uh, object and this mesh into a skinned mesh uh, render and this allows us to first of all have bones and second of all allow the cloth component to use this and turn it into a cloth. So um, we need to kind of adjust these settings and the uh, properties of this cloth to make it uh, appear as a flag because if I were to run it now I think it will just turn into nothing and drop. So running this I'm expecting it to drop kind of like this. To fix this we need to set some constraints on how the cloth behaves and moves. Um, so we're going to be going to the cloth component right here and clicking the left icon on the edit cloth constraints. So we're going to be editing some constraints onto the cloth to limit it on how it moves. And currently it doesn't have any constraints onto it and we don't want that. So we need to, uh, essentially you can see these points right here, you can edit this on how far these points should be moving from their starting position. So we obviously want to have some points here that don't move whatsoever. So this will be kind of, you can think of a flag uh, on the kind of side where it's connected to a pole, it, the, those points do not move whatsoever. So we want to have those points right here and in order to set them we need to, let me just full screen this, Okay, you can see this cloth constraint uh, window right here and it says on the paint tab max distance and this you can set and kind of paint onto the points how far each point should be going and the red one here says uh, being zero it means it doesn't move whatsoever so I want to be setting all of the above here to be red and do not move uh, from their starting position I want them to be static and this will prevent them from falling as we saw before and you can obviously set the other ones to a specific number on how far the point should go but if you leave them unconstrained and kind of uh, blank as you see here kind of black uh, these will be just go going uh, without any constraints and I, I kind of prefer that if you have any specific preferences on how far you want your uh, points to be moving on how far it should go uh, you can edit those and kind of set this let's for example to 2 and paint them over or 5 depending on what you're trying to do um, Okay, so now let's run it and see the difference that this makes now that we have set some constraints onto the cloth and you'll see that the cloth doesn't drop no more and it's static because of the constraint that we set on the top row of the cloth. So now that it's static, it still looks boring. It doesn't actually look like a flag. Uh, so the main thing that I would usually do when creating a flag is add some external acceleration and random acceleration to kind of simulate how the wind behaves. So going on to the tab here on the inspector we have external acceleration and random acceleration. The uh, If I were to run this, I'll show you during runtime how this looks like, how each one of these affect the cloth. If you were to set the acceleration to 5, so the external acceleration 5, it will look kind of like this. I think 5 is a bit too strong of a motion, uh, but it's kind of a constant push towards uh, the axis that we have here and due to we have the gravity enabled you will see that uh, it actually drops uh, and don't, doesn't actually stick onto the air kind of like this so if I were to set it to maybe one it will be closer to how the wind actually behaves so kind of like this and you can see the wind uh, kind of simulating the wind through uh, the external acceleration and I usually like to also combine it with the random acceleration which is not as uh, it's a static acceleration constantly, it's more randomness and that gives a more interesting look to your flag. Now there are more uh, properties onto the cloth component 
but I won't going to I'm not going to be going through each one of these because it will take longer for the video than I don't feel like this is necessary. Uh, the main ones, in my opinion, are the acceleration ones. Maybe the gravity, if you want to have that disabled, uh, you can disable that. But most of these are pretty obvious. But one thing that I do want to uh, kind of have a look at, in case, for example, there are some flags uh, that I see around that kind of have the uh, pole, maybe, I'll call this pole instead of a cylinder, behind the, uh, the holding point is behind this. So if I were to set it like this, and it will be more like a banner instead, um, you want the uh, flag to kind of react with this collider. So if I were to set this and run, run it like this, the cylinder will be completely ignored and the cloth will be running through it. So if I were to actually increase the acceleration, so two, 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 you can see that the cloth completely ignores the cylinder or the pole behind it. And to fix that, I'm going to be showing you a quick way. So you can see that the cloth, the cylinder has a capsule collider onto it. And if I were to go to the plane cloth, and you'll see this capsule collider on here, and set the size to one. This allows you to drop any any cylinder from the scene um, onto this tab. Let me just select the right one. You can see that this uh, adds into the first element the cylinder capsule that we have. Uh, or the capsule collider that we have on to here and this allows the uh, cloth to react upon it and not ignore it completely so if i were to run it and see how this looks like you'll see that uh, the flag will be reacting onto it um again i need to set the acceleration i was uh, i should have set that without being in the actual game so you can see how the flag reacts from the pole it's not perfect, as you can see, it kind of clips through, but with some modifications, I'm sure you will be able to get some great results. As you can see, uh, if you were to set some constraints correctly, and uh, you will be expecting to have this uh, a much better result, because as of now, our constraints are above, and this doesn't look great. If I were to set the constraint onto the bottom part here, it will be more appropriate, and that will give a better result. So. Uh, hopefully you understand uh, what I mean and hopefully you got a better idea of how to make your own flags. Um, if you didn't make sure to like the video, if you enjoy our videos, please make, subscribe onto the channel to see more of our videos. Thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day and goodbye.